obviously you went through a sort of a cataclysmic period in your life in the early 90s. You had this awful car accident. Razzle died in that. You went through uh, a divorce in 93, and then this uh, terrible thing with your daughter, who was four years old, who died of stomach cancer. Collectively, when you look back at that period in your life, was that the moment for you? Did that change everything for you? Well, I mean, um, you know, as a father, you know, you want to be there to protect your children and and uh, do whatever you can to keep them safe. And with something like, you know, with cancer, uh, you're just really helpless. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing. Uh, it, 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 it was just, it was, it was a really hard, hard time. You know, obviously, you know, really having good, you know, going to the hospital every day and seeing her still, you know, be in good spirits, but, you know, and you know she's not, you know, not going to make it. And, uh, and you knew that, did you? Yeah, well, the doctors really, from the beginning, they said it was, you know, it was, it was a bit dodgy whether she would ever survive this. She had uh, uh, 12 operations, something like that, and, and uh, we had some hope at some point, but it just it, it just didn't work out. And, and uh, after she passed away, um, it took me a long time to, 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 to deal with it. Um, I pretty much tried to kill myself, you know, every day with pills and alcohol and I would just disappear for months at a time, not tell anybody where I was, where I was at, and and in and out of rehabs, and and uh, you know, then I, I finally just pulled it together, and uh, I, I kind of told myself that I had to do something in her name to keep her name alive and her memory alive, and then so I started the foundation. And tell me about the foundation. Uh, well, it's, uh, the Scholar Neal Foundation, and and uh, we raise money for anybody who really needs it. You know, children's hospitals or, like, even to these things we make, these things called uh, uh, Owie Bow Wowies. There are these little dogs where, where the, the, the kids can, like, uh, put bandages on them and take their temperature and, you know, just make them feel a bit better. So it's, it's nice to be able to, to sit down at the end of the year and, and write checks to people that, uh, that really need it. Oh, and, and, and it keeps her, you know, uh, it, it really keeps her memory alive. If people want to donate money, how do they do that? Um, Skylarnil.org. Simple as that. That's it, yeah. Tell me, you've got two children, two boys. Yep. How old are they now? Fifteen and almost fourteen. What's it like for them, having you as a dad? And what's it like for you, being a dad with two young teenage sons? Um, well, it's, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, they... Yeah. It's amazing, man. Um, you know, they're at the age now where it's getting really fun. Um, you know, they like to come out on tour, <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, now how do you deal with that? Well, it's interesting because, you know, when I've got to, when they want to stay longer, and they're like, Dad, did you ask Mom if we can stay longer? And they want to stay longer. Okay. You know, so, like, they, they're, they're experiencing this part of, you know, of, of my life, and it's so fun bringing them around to to see what what it is that their dad's always gone doing. You know, and so they get it, and they want to stay. It's like a big, it's like the ultimate fun, you know, summer camp to them. You know, um, so it's when they get to like nineteen, twenty, and they want to start partying. <clears throat> oh yeah. How do you think? How are you gonna deal with that? Yeah. It's a question for all of you. Oh, yeah, how do you deal yeah, with, right, Dad. Sure. How do you deal with in terms of advice you give to your offspring? I don't. You've got your four kids, right, Nicky? Yeah. Have you thought about this? Have you got well, the stage I, where you have to do that? I have a 20-year-old. I have a 17-year-old, 16-year-old, and a 10-year-old. So the, the, the age gap is pretty wide. So they're watching this, and they've watched their dads, and they're all <clears> like, bloody hell. <laughs> you know? And they're like, yeah. oh, I want a better reaction. Then what do you say? You know, I just try to share with them my experience, and uh, you know, I'm, in the end, I tell them, you know, you're going to do what you're going to what you're going to do. You're going to make your decisions, but at least you can see, at least from a few stories that I've been involved with, well, how it does or doesn't turn out good. And if your daughter comes back with somebody resembling one of you lot when you were twenty, kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a daughter, but I've rehearsed a speech for that. It would be like, you know, the guy comes to the door and you're sitting there and you go, listen, buddy, 
Anything you do to my daughter, I'm going to do to you. <laughs> Ouch. Do you know, I've got, I've got <laughs> three sons. I've got three sons. This, last week, my wife gave birth to a, a girl for the first time. Yeah. And I was thinking exactly, I felt murderous towards her first boyfriend already. She was a day old. I could feel, I could feel this murderous thing rising inside me. <laughs> Coming up, Motley Crue's women and the surprising answer to this question. If I could strand you on a desert island tomorrow, who's the woman you take?